Hello, Happy New Year to everyone, and welcome to our third of four webinars for the 2019 International Home and Houseware Show titled Learning How to Bring Buyers and Media to Your Booth. Uh, we know that your time is very valuable, uh, but I think what we have to share with you today is well worth your time and effort um, over the next hour or so. So thank you for your time and your participation. The objective today is really to share with you all the tools and resources um, that are available to you to help maximize the show um, and ensure success. Okay. My name is John Jesse. I'm the Vice President of Industry Development here at IHA. I've been here for three years. Uh, prior to that, I was in retail for 35 years, primarily with Kohl's, where I was a Senior Vice President of Hard Home and Housewares there. The reason I bring that up is that um, throughout the webinar today, um, I want to be able to provide some insights to you uh, from a retail perspective that I think you might find interesting. Joining me today are Nancy Michael and Debbie Teshke, and I will let them introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Nancy. Hi, I'm Debbie. And together we're going to take you through the information over the next hour or so. Um, questions. If you do have a question during the webinar today, uh, please feel free to submit them on the chat function and we will answer those. Uh, we have had, just as an FYI, some technical difficulties on our last webinar. Um, however, um, if we do have that today, please feel free to, to submit, um, and we will answer all the questions at the end of the webinar. It may not be actually um, during the process and during the hour today, uh, but don't be shy. Feel free to um, submit questions at any point. Um, you will receive, um, just so you know, an email link um, at the end of this um, that will have a link to the webinar. We are recording this. Um, and it will be available not only um, through that link that you'll receive within the next 24 hours, but it'll also be available on our website within 24 hours that you can go back and refer to it. Um, so that will be available on our website at housewords.org. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy. So happy new year again to everybody. Um, we're going to just start with some, um, I guess, housekeeping. We had a very big database conversion this year. We got off our 25-year-old platform and onto a new platform. Um, so those of you who are new to the association or new to exhibiting with us, there'll be no hiccups for you because it's only what you know now. But for those of you um, who've been with us in the past, um, everything's a bit different in terms of accessing. So I just want to take you through just a quick tutorial on what to expect and how to access a lot of the opportunities um, that we're going to cover today. So for those of you who are veterans, um, the seniority number and the user ID are no longer going to be how you access you know, your, the password, essentially. That was your password before. That does not mean we're not still working on a seniority number system. We're just not using it for um, accessing information. So there's kind of two deadlines listed on this sheet. We did the conversion on July 13th. Our application deadline was July 2nd. So if you submitted your application and your payment by July 13th, that would have gone through the old system and that automatically got converted into the new system. Um, if you submitted after July 13th, then you have to go in and create a username and password in order to access your exhibitor portal and your exhibitor checklist is what we're going to talk a lot today because that's where you're going to have all this information at your fingertips through that checklist. So if, if you were kind of in this July process with us, you were going to get something that looked like this. So if you converted, you needed to click reset your password. If you were new and you needed a space application, you would click that other sign up link. Um, there's just kind of a honed in picture on it. So anybody who made that deadline of July 13th and you haven't been into your account yet, you're gonna go hit and reset password. Anybody new joining us, you already would have done this through sign up. So if you have questions about this, you can always contact myself or the sales manager, your sales manager after. But here's where it takes you once you sign in is to your exhibitor checklist. And this is just a test mode, but it, it's going to look very similar to this. Um, and then as you complete things, you click them off and it tells you when you've completed the dates. 
Um, on the left hand there, there's just some important, you know, PDFs and such. I believe they um, added the exhibitor services manual link in there, so you can get to that from this now as well. But if you haven't been on this, you need to go spend some time on it because this is where you're going to go ahead and sign up for all these things that are going to help you do attract buyers and media for the show. So you may say, well, how do I get into that sign up link? So there's two ways to do this through um, the website, essentially. But you can always just call your sales manager or Michelle Lehman, who's our sales coordinator, and she can always send you the link to get in. But I'm just going to take you through it really quick. So this is the landing homepage of the um, website. And you'll see at the top there with that red arrow, it says show. So you're going to want to go to that show tab. And under it is exhibit at the show. So you're going to hit those that exhibit at the show. And it's going to take you to this exhibitor resources page. And here's where we're going to spend a lot of time on this page today. But that first box where it says apply to exhibit and that inside that box it says new exhibitors. If you just click on new exhibitors, it's going to take you to that sign in link or you can go click onto the exhibitor marketing kit, which is the, the box below. Um, and then basically any opportunity we're going to cover today that has a sign up, you can just go into that, click on it, it'll take you to the sign up link. And there she blows again. Great. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Uh, before we start taking taking you through some of the more tactical things and the opportunities that are available, I thought I'd take a moment and share a couple of um, points with you and statistics that you may not be aware of. You may uh, believe they're obvious, but um, I think it's very informative uh, to hear some of the, um, the information um, surrounding the show that you may not um, necessarily have access to. Um, Obviously, you know, the show can help you find new customers. However, I'm not sure if you're aware of, and this is consistent over the years, um, that approximately one third of the buyers are new every single year. And that comes from certainly, um, you know, new um, retailers who do come to the show, maybe they may be startups, but it's also turnover in existing retailers where there may be new buyers uh, from retailers who have attended the show before. But literally about a third of the buyers are new and may come with a new eye and a new perspective um, walking into the show. From an international basis, everyone knows we're an international show, um, ergo the International Home and Houseware Show. Um, however, um, that is a continuing growth area for us um, as a show. The international audience continues to get larger and larger. Um, it's a very big segment of our show. In fact, it too is about a third of our entire attendance. Um, so there is a lot of um, international attendance at the show. From a top to top perspective, we look at that two ways, which I wanna share with you. One is, that we do have the top 200 retailers um, in our categories um, that attend the show every year. Um, so the, all the key decision makers are here, the top retailers are here. In addition to that, what we're seeing is continual growth year over year of top key executives that are coming to the show from those retailers. So although we have a wide variety of retailers coming, you know, whether it be um, you know, buyers, specialty, um, dot com, we do have certainly the top executives coming and that number continues to grow and grow. And then lastly, the importance of media generate not only consumer, um, but retail interest as well, which we'll talk about and Debbie will share some information later on. Uh, but it's really interesting that, um, and this is a, a personal note as well as other retailers um, that I'm aware of, most retailers or a lot of retailers, especially the majors, they don't have a chance to get to the entire show. It's very difficult to walk the entire show. So they rely on different um, access points and, and different types of sources and resources throughout the show um, to help drive where they go. And a lot of that is media driven. It could be the daily media that comes out. It could be the pre-show media that comes out. Uh, but don't underestimate how important media is um, to the retail community in terms of planning. And the other component is planning. Again, what's up on the screen now may seem very um, simple but is extremely important, you know, being specific, being real, realistic, using the resources avail that are available. And again, I commented that it may seem simplistic, but I will tell you in the time that I've been here, you know, in, in terms of surveying our exhibitors, and we do that in, in numerous ways, as you're aware of, we send out post-show surveys. We also spend a lot of time talking to our exhibitors, not only after, at the show, but after the show. And it's really interesting, the feedback we get. 
um, we usually ask, how was the show for you? For those exhibitors who have a great show, undoubtedly, one of the reasons they have a great show is they utilize the tools that are available. We'll ask them and they, they'll list all these pre-show opportunities that we're gonna share with you that they utilize. Conversely, quite frankly, I'm a little bit shocked that those vendors or exhibitors that we speak to who do not have a successful show, a lot of times they don't do anything. They just arrive and they think that, you know, if I show up, it's gonna happen. Um, so there really is a, a varying degree of success based on pre-planning um, in terms of how successful your show is. So with that in mind, what we did is we're gonna um, segment this into three different areas. We're gonna start by talking about attractors, attracting buyers and media. Um, secondly, we're gonna talk about using Housewares Connect 365. That really is the primary tool that you can use to share um, all your um, content with the retail community. And then lastly, how do you get your product noticed, um, really using consumer uh, news media? Now I'm gonna turn it over to um, Nancy to get started. Thanks, John. Okay, so we're gonna go through some, just again, just some particulars on how to access the marketing kit online. So you're gonna to go to housewares.org. We're gonna be back at this um, home screen again on the landing page of the website. And you're gonna to go to the same place, show, exhibit at the show. And then once we get onto that exhibitor resources page, you're gonna go into that second, the below tile, key exhibitor services. I blew it up on the right side so you can see everything you can access there. The exhibitor marketing kit is what we're talking about today, but I do wanna point out the um, exhibitor services manual is right above that. And I keep bringing that up because that's where you're gonna order all your Freeman stuff, your electricity, your furniture, your carpet, whatever you might need for show. And um, you wanna pay particular attention to deadlines because they're coming up and prices do go up quite substantially if you don't meet those deadlines. So I digress. Okay, back to the marketing kit. Um, once you get into the marketing kit, it's gonna take you to the landing page of the marketing kit and we've divided it into tiles or sections. You all should have received um, a hard copy of the exhibitor kit in the mail, and that's really meant to be used as a tool alongside the website. All the detailed information um, is that you're gonna find it right here from this page. And we're gonna talk, as John said, a lot about attracting buyers and media today. So that first tile is where we're gonna spend some of our time right now. So attracting buyers, um, before the show, there's obviously things to do during the show and after the show, but a bulk of it you're gonna to wanna to handle before the show. And most of the opportunities are free. Um, and as the association, as the industry's association, we work very hard to try and bring you very substantial opportunities that are already included in your membership. So the, probably the biggest, one of the best things we offer is the buyers list. Um, this would be 2018 registered buyers. The 2019 registered buyers list goes up um, mid-April and that's for that post-show follow-up plan. But this is, you'll have access to this for um, the 2018 registered list. And here you can see it's in an Excel sheet, it's sortable by retail channel, um, buying responsibility, product category. You can download this list from your exhibitor checklist, which we're gonna get into in a minute. There are no email addresses on the buyer's list. That's at the buyer's request. And now we're starting to kind of enter territory um, like Europe has with um, having to really opt in. So we, at the buyer's request, have not included email addresses, but you can sometimes figure them out based on um, who you're looking at. And then, we just tell you to be creative, you know, fax, faxes are kind of passe, but if you do send one, they tend to go right into someone's um, email inbox. So just things to think about. Okay, so we covered how you sign in and here's one of the things you would have signed in for um, that's gonna take you into your exhibitor checklist. And this is, this is the exact tab to download the buyer's media list. And you can see there, you've got the US buyer list, the non, the international buyer list and the news media from 2018. And Deb will get into this a little bit in her side, but we do put the 2019 news registration up, um, media registration mid February when all those come in. 
And then this is just kind of um, important. We're gonna cover this a couple times through this presentation, but this is a disclaimer just to let you know that you'll probably, you probably already are getting people who are trying to sell you lists from our show. Um, we are not associated, affiliated with any of those people. We give you our list for free. If anybody's asking you to pay for it, it's not coming from the Housewares Association and our advice is to um, not, not partake in that. So we have a, a new um, opportunity this year and this is basically a, um, a digital um, buyer invitation that you can customize to your company. You can upload your buyer list confidentially um, and send out to your buyers to promote yourself at the show and the booth, et cetera. If you should have received um, an email with a unique link to access this, um, there'll be another one going out probably next week. Um, and you can also call your sales manager and we can try and help you out with that. It's a little bit new, so we're, we're all sort of still trying to adjust and figure it all out. Um, but It'll allow you to have like a web landing page and that's kind of what this is, where you can do some customization with your company description and um, your products and your brands and your licenses. And again, this goes to a privately protected, your privately protected customer list. Nobody else has access to that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about 365. Um, this is also a free service, and John just mentioned this is a really important tool. Um, he also mentioned we talk to our buyers year round and we survey them, and we do know that many of our key retail buyers use HC365 in order to navigate the show and to find new products. Um, so don't, this, if there's one thing you do, you should definitely make sure that you've got a, a robust profile on 365. So last year, there were over 300,000 searches um, conducted by consumers, buyers, and media. Now we list consumers in there because our search engine optimization is so good that people are just typing in a brand. Often, um, HC365 will come up at the top of that list, that search list. So then they end up going in there to find the company and Ultimately, we get, how do I return my broken coffee maker? But anyways, <laughs> just know that consumers are looking at it, as are your competitors. Um, so you wanna be cautious in terms of if you're listing prices or whatnot in your catalog, you might wanna think about not doing that. Um, and we also know that listings with catalogs and product images and often video are viewed more frequently, 75% more frequently than those without. So just don't have a bland page with your company name and booth number. Nancy, we have a question. Okay. On the invite, there is a space for a free badge. How does this work? Um, okay, so that, you're, again, you're sending the registration. That's a registration link. So the Feather, the digital, it's powered by Feather, so we call it Feather, but it's really a customizable digital invitation. When you send that out to your buyer list, that link is already embedded in there. And so all your buyer has to do is click that link and they can register for their free badge as a buyer. Um, if you're an Great. exhibitor, look, okay. Any other questions you can contact me after. So here we're back to 365. Um, this is just about increasing your searchability, um, adding a company description, catalogs, any in-booth appearances or events. If you're made in USA product, there's a way to get that on there. If you have smart product, there's a way to, to flag that on your profile. And then any other special things you wanna put up there, there's a place for you know press releases and anything you wanna do. So we're, I'm gonna take you through what this is gonna look like. Everything you put into your HT365 profile goes um, transfers to the mobile app. And we're really, you know, as we get into a more digital age, we always push to use the mobile app on site, even though we still have a printed directory. But everything that you put into your profile on 365 will transfer into the mobile app application. Okay, so we are back to our homepage on the website. Um, 
I'm going to show you how to access the 365 here. So you're going to go to the website again, housewares.org, and we're going to have our show and exhibit at the show. And then when you get to that landing page um, with all these tiles, at the bottom of it, you'll see this exhibitors update your HD365 and show directory listing. And I've got that red circle. You're just going to click on that box. And voila, it's going to take you to the new sign-in page. Um, so if you haven't, if you don't have a password, you need to create one. So you're going to hit reset password. And if at this point, you shouldn't be signing up if you're on this, you're exhibiting, presumably if you're on this webinar. And then it's going to take you directly to this task. Um, update your online company profile. And then you're going to hit that blue bar. And it's going to take you to another page. And these are all the different options for you to go in and populate your 365 profile page. So I'm not going to go through each one of these, but you do want to go through each one and, and put information in according to what it's asking you for. Um, I will tell you, too, that, um, sorry, that when you put in your company description, that is searchable. That is keyword searchable. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, and this is all for the buyers. This is all for buyers to, to find out who you are, where you are, what you sell, and any new products you want to show. These are just some tips on, on helping people navigate your own page here. Um, one mil, millibyte, megabyte is best because um, it'll open fast. If you've got multiple catalogs, I'm kind of skipping bullets here, you, you're going to want to break those up because you don't want to lose people while they're waiting for your images to download. Catalogs need to be in PDF format, and file names should be simple. It will not accept any file names with symbols. And your product images need to be in JPEG or GIF files. And here we go back to another important notice. Um, this is about the FAIR guide and the Expo guide. These are um, directories. I'm, if you have not received these, that's good. If you have, I suggest you throw it away immediately. They come in a the mail. They look official. Um, it is contract if you sign it. It's, you're in for thousands of dollars. They promote international directory, et cetera. So again, we encourage you to stay away from this. Ours is free, um, and anybody can access it. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what your work creates um, so that you can see what the buyers and media and consumers see once you've input everything. So we're going to use Casabella as an example. I just want a little disclaimer here. This is um, from last year. This has not been updated. Casabella has since been um, acquired into another company. So if you're with Casabella, Please excuse us not updating this, but all the um, functionality is exactly the same. So keyword search for a company name, Casabel, it's going to take you to the Casabel com company listing. And then it's going to have all these good little things, the booth number, the photos, and you can work with the photos to have whichever one you want to pop up first. Um, it'll just let us know if you have videos. Um, show specials is actually not going to be available anymore. All it did was let people know that you had a show special. It didn't let you put in what your show special was. And then the briefcase is for buyers and media who they want to see your company so they can put your company into their briefcase. And then um, here we are to like what the, the page looks like, your company profile page. So there's a logo. Um, up here at the top, so let's say you're looking at your company page just to make sure it's laying out correctly and everything's in order and you see that there's a mistake, you can just go right up there, click that here button, and it'll take you to that sign-in page again, and then it'll take you to the task on your exhibitor checklist. So there it is in its entirety. Um, so you've got your company logo, your booth number, and what expo you're in, your company address, company contacts, phone, and fax numbers, so you can list who you want on there. Your company description, again, that's keyword searchable. Your videos and product images. 
there's more images. Your brand or your product listings, your catalogs, and your brands and licenses are all on that profile page. So just to kind of wrap what this is, um, buyers and media use this to plan their show. Media definitely uses this, and Debbie will get into it a little bit more, but to find your new products and to find newsworthy stories that they can cover um, to support editorial. We have a lot of media running around the show, so it's all very important. And then here we are. So this is how a buyer would search. Um, they go to kind of a different place on the home page of the website. At the bottom, there's a way for to access this. But again, they can type in their keyword and however they want to search. So products, brands, special events. And then it's going to create this kind of page for them. These, they, you can see they've selected two exhibitors in the North Building and four in the South Building. And then it's going to show them a floor plan. And then, so this is a South Building floor plan. And then it's going to map out for them. Those are corresponding numbers. I know they're very small. But it'll say one, two, three, four. So they can look at it and find out exactly where it is on the floor plan and kind of plan their route. Um, so they can maximize their time at the show. So if you have any more questions about this, again, your sales manager or myself, we can all help you. Um, but now I'm going to turn it back over to John. Thank you, Nancy. Um, that takes you through a lot of the pre-planning events, opportunities um, that you need to prepare for, um, quite frankly, around 365 um, to get your product available to buyers. Now what we want to do is um, take you through things that occur and are available to you during the show that you can plan for now, but that occur during the show. And as Nancy noted earlier, the majority of these are free. The first thing is sponsorships. Um, we as a um, not-for-profit trade association, IHA, um, are not driven by necessarily the top line, so you will not see a ton of sponsorship opportunities. It allows us to keep the show clean, um, and a great environment for our retail community um, to shop. Um, but there are a few select areas that we do have sponsorships that are available throughout the show, and those you see up on your screen now. Um, that includes buyers clubs, uh, buyer and media lunch cafes, the International Business Center, as well as the ability um, to buy a sponsorship on the bus videos. If you are interested in any of those, please refer to the marketing kit uh, for more details. Another opportunity available to you that you can take advantage of now, but happens and occurs during the show, are the new product showcases. I mean, again, as a retailer, and you hear it all the time, I'm sure, what's the number one question at a trade show? What's new? Um, this surfaces all the time. So what we have are new product showcases that are located in the buyer's clubs. There is a buyer's club per building or per expo, South Hall, North Hall, as well as Lakeside. Within the buyer's clubs, um, are the new product showcases. These buyer clubs can only be accessed by buyers, um, retail attendees, and the media. So no exhibitors um, can access the buyer's clubs. Once they enter the buyer's clubs, um, we offer multiple things, but um, the one that we're gonna speak to now, quite frankly, is the new product showcases. This does come at a cost of $300 um, entry per product. But what this allows is for the buyers and media, again, in each one of the buildings, to see your product without any other exhibitor seeing your new product. Um, they have the avail availability of a scanner. Um, if they come in and they, they um, select a scanner, they can go through and identify product uh, that um, um, is interested, that they are interested in. They can scan each of the products that they are interested in. Then at the end of the show, the retailer uh, will get a list and contact information of all of the products that they scanned in the new product showcases. Um, and then you, in turn, uh, will get a list after the show of all the retailers that scanned your product. In that list will be contact information, including emails. So this is one opportunity to get email and contact information uh, from the retailers interested in your product. In addition to that, once you have paid to be in the new product showcases, your product um, becomes submitted and is automatically eligible for a GIA award. GIA is the Global Innovation Award. Um, that is run through IHA and the International Housewares Show and, be, and is becoming an internationally recognized 
um, high profile award for the industry. It has a, um, a professional judging panel for 13 different categories of business. What happens is on Saturday, um, those judges uh, will look at the product um, that is submitted and Saturday evening, uh, there will be an event, the GEO Awards event, uh, where the winners and finalists will be selected. Um, and then beginning Sunday morning, not only the finalists, uh, but obviously the winner uh, will be showcased in the Hall of Global Innovation uh, for the entire show to see. So it's a great opportunity to get your product not only recognized, um, but in front of um, all the buyers that come into the new product showcases. The deadline for that is January 18th, so that is coming up quickly um, if you want to take advantage of that. Another opportunity you can take advantage of, but the deadline for that is quickly approaching next week of January 9th, is to participate in the Pantone Color Watch display. This is a free opportunity available to all exhibitors um, where you have the opportunity to look at the colors that Pantone has selected uh, to be introduced at the show and have your product um, chosen to be um, put in a Pantone display in the Hall of Global Innovation. Um, this is totally at the discretion of Pantone. And if you want to participate, um, again, the deadline for that is January 9th. I will tell you from a retail perspective, the one thing, no matter how busy I was at the show, um, I never left the show without visiting Pantone. So it's a great opportunity for those of you who um, have appropriate product um, to get it available to the uh, retail community. Um, order writing. Um, many buyers um, you know, still do write orders at the show. Um, and even in this digital age where there are opportunities to go um, and get app-based um, order writing tools, um, we do make available for those who are interested in um, an order form. Uh, we make an IHA and Houseware Show order form available on our website. Um, if you're interested and need an order form for the show, um, you can find it on housewares.org. Okay, um, so this is one of another kind of really great opportunity we have. It's free, um, and this is the lead retrieval unit. Um, this is actually one way we kind of encourage you to scan people because it's a way to get their email address. Um, it's considered a business card transaction when you're scanning in your booth people's information. So these are free. Um, there's limited supply. We always sell out of these. If the, you haven't taken care of this yet, I suggest when we finish this webinar, you just go sign up for it. Um, there's two different kinds available. Um, one's uh, basically you get two licenses for a mobile phone, which you can scan, or you can also rent a tablet. Again, these are free. Um, they're limited. You can see 34,000 booth scans were recorded last year. Um, and this is just a great thing to have for your post-show follow-up because it keeps a record of everybody who's visited your booth. Nancy, we have a quick question. Okay. Um, for Houseware's Connect 365, how long will, how long until updates take effect? Oh, it um, updates every 24 hours. So usually um, at night it, it'll update, but it, we say 24 hours, but generally it goes through the night and then the next day it's usually ready to go with new information. That was a good question. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so um, again, we've got signage available for you. Um, this is all free of charge. New for the home signs, those are unlimited. You can order as many as you want. If you wanna put these, they're small little easel signs that you can put next to your new products because that's what everybody always wants to see. Um, the next two, Made in the USA and Smart Home Signs, those you actually have to um, basically agree to the criteria. The USA, Made in the USA is the federal guidelines um, and Smart Home is kind of our own definition of what we consider smart. You just, that is all found on when you're doing your HC365 um, profile page, that screen that had all those blue bars on it. This is one of them. You just go in there and you, we don't police it, it's self-policed. And then you can get those signs. They will be delivered to you on Friday during setup. And then no photography signs. Um, those are also available to you. You can also find the, the sign up for this in the ESM. But I suggest you keep it. You know, you're kind of in charge of your own booth, in charge of letting people take pictures or not take pictures. Um, we find that it's just a good sign to have just for your own intellectual property needs. 
Um, these deadlines are February 2nd. So again, these are real easy sign up. If you just want to do new for home, you can go put in however many you think you might need. Nancy? Yes. We have one. With the Housewares Connect 365 app, where can I go to see if the things uh, have uploaded, that they have uploaded? So the app you can download from um, iTunes or um, whatever the Google Samsung, Play. Google Play is. Sorry, I'm an, I, I'm an iPhone user. Um, and you can just go ahead and download it. And it's right, the first tile on it is exhibitors, and you can search for your own company in there and see how it all displays. Yep, you can browse by exhibitor, category, smart home product, et cetera. Yeah. All available to you. Yeah, and that, again, the same updates happen with the app. So anything you put in, figure 24 hours, and then it'll, it'll get updated. And if for some reason it doesn't, just let us know so we can notify our, our tech company. Um, Thank you. So Sure. So these are, again, the Made in USA and Smart Home. I said that page with all the blue bars, you want to go into the special marketing opportunities, and it's it's all very user-friendly. I know this is a lot of information, but just so you know, updating your profile, it, if it's seeming complicated at all, it's really not. You just need to follow the prompts. Okay, so that takes you through the pre-show and the opportunities that are available for you during the show. We do want to mention the one post-show opportunity, not, not that you're thinking about post-show at the moment, uh, but the one post-show opportunity is what Nancy mentioned early um, that's available um, for free on our website, and that's access to the, to the buyer and media list. Um, it takes us about three to four weeks uh, to really ensure that the um, information is accurate um, and available for you to download, but you'll receive an email. Um, it says available on April 2019. It should most likely be available um, towards the beginning of that month. Uh, you'll have access to um, the 2019 uh, buyers and media, both um, international and domestic buyers in the entire media list. Again, to Nancy's point earlier, that will be in an Excel format um, that you can use at your discretion however you'd like to use it. Um, you can use it in conjunction with the lead retrieval we discussed. Um, and other information to certainly target the companies you may have missed during the show. And that will be um, sent to you via um, email uh, post-show. Now, with that in mind, we're going to turn it over to Debbie to go through media. Thank you, Jen. Um, the news media is a big component of our show. We do get a lot of consumer and trade media. Remember, the trade media is also very important. And some of our exhibitors actually do exhibit at the show simply for the media coverage that we do get. So I'm going to talk about some services over the next few minutes um, that you can take advantage of. And hopefully, you will be part of our consumer coverage and trade press coverage of the show. Um, we reached the consumer. Um, in 2018, the show generated over 500 million consumer impressions in the media. And that was as of last summer. And I know um, coverage continues you know, throughout the year. It just doesn't stop like a couple of months after the show. So I'm sure our numbers are greater. And if you w wonder what a consumer impression is, I simply take the um, monitoring numbers that I get for audience, for TV broadcasts or radio, if we can get those numbers, um, the subscription numbers for newspapers and magazines, and then viewership numbers for um, social media or internet websites and add them up. And that is how we get our consumer impression number. And so I'm hoping that you will take advantage of our services and be part of our coverage this year. Now, here is a list of um, the services that I'll talk about today and they're all included in the marketing kit. On the right side of the screen is the page from the printed kit that lists everything and then all more details are um, on the website that we'll go through. So here's the tile on the marketing kit landing page, attract media that you will click on and it'll take you to everything individually. So the first service I want to talk about is our show preview press event and it is this month on January 17th in New York City. It's a great way to jumpstart your PR efforts. It's limited to 60 exhibitors. So you're going to be able to stand out 
um, from the crowd. You'll be one of you know 60 companies meet, having this exclusive opportunity to meet with the media. It's a four-hour event, and we usually get somewhere around 50 to 60 consumer and trade editors. Last January, we had over 72. It was really a phenomenal event. And so far, I've heard from Wall Street Journal, The Today Show, NBC News, Business Insider, Good Housekeeping, Philadelphia Inquirer, several tech blogs that say they're going to be coming to the event. Um, and before and after the event, you will receive the complete media contact information for those who have RSVP'd and attended. I still have tables available, um, you know, as the event is just two and a half weeks away. If you want to participate, um, please sign up within the next day or two to guarantee your table and be part of this um, exciting event. Next, we have the media um, list, and as Jen mentioned, and Nancy showed you, it's on the same page as the buyer list. It, it is free. It is everyone who registered for the 2018 show, and on our list, we do include emails if the media has said that we can make them available to the exhibitors. And we encourage you to use this list to create your pitching list for the show. Um, you download it from the exhibitor portal, and then in mid-February, I will have the 2019 pre-registered list of everyone who has registered for the show as of early February. Um, so you can t download that list and use that to kind of follow, follow up with them and, you know, let them know that you're going to be at the show and to come visit you. And again, the list is free. We do not charge for this. Um, one of the few services that we do charge for is the traveling media tour. But this is a great way for you to get your products out there um, to stations and consumers throughout the country. We promote the products to consumers through in-studio TV segments. And as John said, you know, the retail buyers are watching their local TV news. And so they may see the segment and they may be interested in your product. I do know that last year, um, one of the companies that participated told our vendor that they have been trying to reach a major retailer for years to come see them and you know talk about their products. And the retailer happened to see one of these um, media tour segments and they ended up coming to see the show or see the exhibitor at the show and they ended up ordering their products. So it is another way to reach you know, the buyer, not just um, let the consumers know about your product. The tour takes place a few weeks before the show. I believe it's gonna be around late February this year. It's done by a third party vendor who has a lot of success. It goes to about 10 to 12 um, markets around the country. Um, it is a little bit expensive, but the vendor will work with you for a package. And there's probably three um, spots left in this tour. It is exclusive. It, it only includes six to eight companies. So you will get, you know, they will be talking about your product and you will get a lot of exposure. Um, the deadline is January 4th, but if the, um, you know, we still have some openings, so please contact Gigi if you are interested in um, being in the tour. Then next we have online press kits, and this service is provided through the virtual press office, um, Cision Newswire Company, and it is, you do have to pay for it, but it's a great way to get your press kits online, and they stay up online in the press room for almost a year until we start the next, next show cycle. The media can access them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, so you get longer visibility. Um, and you can go green, you don't have to have paper. And the packages will start at 425, so even a small company can take advantage of the service. And you have to have um, exhibit space in the show to participate. And then this is another way that um, the virtual press office can help you. They provide news release distribution through CR Newswire. So if you sign up for an online press kit, you can also take advantage of the, the PR Newswire programs and they will work with you to put together a package to help you get your information out to the news media. Now, we also offer opportunities for the trade publications. because, As John mentioned, that's what the buyers are reading before the show. And the trade publications do want your new product information. And this is a free opportunity. It's not advertising. Um, there, the trade pubs do offer advertising opportunities, and we do have a list of the advertising deadlines in the marketing kit if you wish to uh, purchase advertising. 
but we also list the editorial context for each of the trade publications that cover the housewares industry, so you can create a pitching list with them and send them your information. And they also want to know about your new product news for their pre-show, their show issues, and then for the publications that do show dailies, they want that information. And if you do receive the daily newsletters from the, the trade pubs, you see that they're starting to do a call out for the show for the new product information. And again, that's free. It's not advertising. They would like your new product information. So we list um, the their specifications for, for what they'd like from you and then who to send it to. We also do that for the international trade publications. Now, the international publications, their deadlines are a little bit earlier than the domestic publications. So I encourage you to go, go to the website after the webinar and look up the publications, see what their deadlines are, see what type of information they're looking for, and then submit it to them. Now, the first question, or the most popular question I'm asked, asked by the media is, what's new? Just like Jen said, the buyers ask, you know, everybody wants to know what's new with the show. But the second most question I'm asked is, who's going to be there? And so our special events and product demonstration service is a way for you to list um, any celebrities you're going to have in your booth, any uh, chefs, if you're going to ha have a celebrity chef doing demonstrations, if your designer is going to be in your booth, or you're doing anything special for the media or for buyers, please use this service. It goes in your Housewares Connect 365 listing, and, that, and it's searchable. Um, for both buyers and news media so they can look up for the um, special events listings. And again, it's free and you can you know, list as many opportunities that you're going to have in your booth as possible. And we say the deadline is March 1st, because, but the earlier you submit this information, the more visibility you will have with both buyers and news media. So then how do you tell us about your new products for the media? And you know the media, they're going to be looking through Housewares Connect 365 to find out the new products. And the new product information for news media is the way to do this. It's a free service. You can list as many new products as you have. So if you have 50 new items in, that you're introducing at the show, you can complete a listing for each item. And it goes into your Housewares Connect 365 listing, but it is only viewable by the news media when they log into their briefcase. So if a buyer um, looks at your listing, they will not see these special listings. Consumers won't, your competitors won't, only the news media when they log into their briefcase. And again, this is free. And so we, the way to do it is um, you will go to the marketing kit, click on the tile, new product information for the news media. And then this is the, the landing page that kind of explains the information we're going to ask for, how it's used. Another benefit of these listings is my show PR team will review them to look for products that they think will be of interest to the media that they're contacting. We also may ask you to send us a sample for the product room that we have in the news center um, that we take the media through so they can see the new products. And then you'll click um, the button on the bottom circled in red that says click here to get started. That will take you to the exhibitor portal page, and then you'll log in as you do for you know everything else, and then that'll take you to a page where you click the button, and it'll take you to the entry form, and just complete that, and um, the listings will go into your 365 listing. Now, if you have a PR agency that is going to be doing this information for you, they need to be listed as one of your contacts in your company listing. So if they're not, they will not be able to access the exhibitor portal. You will have to add them as a contact for your company, and then they can access this information. But we've eliminated, as Nancy mentioned, you don't need your seniority number or IDs to um, enter. It's just your uh, email and your password to enter the exhibitor portal. Now I want to talk a little bit about a couple of services during the show. Um, and the first is the News Center. And this is the headquarters for the media when they um, come to the show. We are located in room S401 on level four of the South Building. We usually get about 400 media that come through the News Center. And here we will also put out your press kits for free. If you want to do a paper press kit 
or a digital kit, either on a CD or a thumb drive, we will put them out for the media to take for free. And I emphasize, it's free. Um, as you can see in, on the photo on the top, we put them in plastic bins. So it's very important that you put your company name on the cover and maybe a photo of your product or some type of illustration. We put them out alphabetical by company. So it's not like first come, first you know, in line. It's, we put them out alphabetically so the media will walk around and look at the kits and take them. We also give them boxes to pack up the kits and then we ship the boxes back to the media's office after the show. So they have your information throughout the year. They don't have to take it, lug it back home on the plane with them or in their car. We'll ship it back for free. And again, that's to, at no charge to you. That's part of your booth space um, fee that we offer the service. And we'd like the kits by um, March 1st. Um, there's information in the marketing kit for shipping them to McCormick Place or if you want to bring them while you're setting up your booth, please do that. We'll be down there beginning the Wednesday before the show. Next, um, we have a service called My Press Release Writer. And if you're a small company and you don't know how to write a press release, you don't have a PR person, or you don't work with the PR agency, but you still want to take advantage of um, doing a press kit, we offer the service. It's only $99 per release. All you have to do is answer a few questions about your company and your product. And then within 48 hours, you will get a Word document back that is a very well-written press release that you can use however you wish. It's yours to own. You have all the rights to it. You can print it on your letterhead for your paper press kit. You could include it in a digital press kit, post it on your website, or if you do the online press kit with VPO, you can include it in that as well. And the um, service is provided by a third-party vendor who does a very nice job. Um, she works with a lot of our inventor exhibitors and um, they, they like her services. She will also do some media distribution for you as well if you um, talk to her about that. Then yeah. I want to take a minute about talking about the media that come to the show. And the media wear a blue badge at, at the show, and we break them down into four different subgroups that will be printed on the badge. First is the, it says news media, which is your traditional print, broadcast, and trade publications. Then we have internet media, which are news websites or just internet-based publications. Or maybe they're the digital editor for a publication that also has a print component, but they want to be um, known as internet media. Then we have bloggers who would have to have a 10,000 to 50,000 following through their social media platforms. And these would be your traditional mommy bloggers, your foodie bloggers, lifestyle bloggers, you know, people ju just starting out and they have the smaller following, followings. And then we have social media influencers. And these are the people who have over 50,000 followers and subscribers. They're your YouTube influencers. A lot of the contributors who write for our Inspired Home are social media influencers. So these are the types of media you will be seeing at the show. Now, in the past, we've always said that publicity is free. And if you see someone wearing a media badge they come to your booth and they ask you to pay, let me know because we don't consider that media. And that is pretty much true for the news media and the internet media um, classifications that we have. But in our new world of social media with bloggers and the social media influencers, um, asking for sponsorships and advertising and you know having partnerships, being a brand ambassador for your brand, that is how they're making their money because they're, you know, small shops, it's usually one person, they don't have a sales staff or anything that they're working with. So that's okay. If, if a blogger or a social media influencer wants to talk to you about a partnership or a sponsorship or advertising on their site, um, that's fine with us. Um, we're not going to say that they're not news media. But if you do get somebody from a magazine or a TV station or a video company coming to you and asking you to pay for coverage, please let me know about that. Then I, um, a lot of our exhibitors work with PR agencies. If you're a small company and you don't have a PR agency and you would like to work with them, I have a list of companies that I've worked with over the years that have housewares clients 
and I'm happy to share that with you. They all know that I do this, and they're happy to talk with you. And a lot of them will, you know, create budgets for smaller companies. You don't have to be a large company and have a large um, advertising budget or PR budget to work with them. So let me know if you'd like that list, and I'm happy to share it with you. Lastly, after the show, we will make the 2019 media list available um, at the same time the buyer list is available in April. Again, this is a free list um, for you to download and follow up with the media who attended the show. Um, not everyone that attends will be able to stop by every booth. There's over 2,200 booths. So go through this list and look at the editors and the writers and the bloggers and the influencers who came and see, look at the ones that you think would be interested in your products and then follow up with them. Um, we respectfully ask that you don't spam everyone. Uh, this is, you know, we want the media to give us their emails and our exhibitors are doing a really good job of going after them and contacting them and sometimes they get complaints that they're just getting too much email and pitches from exhibitors, but I ask that you look at look at the list and you know just thoughtfully think about the editors and, and the bloggers that would be interested in your products. And then also update your Housewares Connect 365 listings throughout the year. Um, in July, when I get a request from an editor for new products, I will send them to HC 365 to search for new items um, that came out at the show. Okay, a um, couple. Few more things to cover. Um, we're nearing the end here. Um, On Peak is our official hotel provider, our housing provider. Again, I don't have the disclaimer up here, but you're going to get contacted by people who say they're affiliated with us who are they are not. Um, I know exhibitors that have fallen into this trap and it's cost them lots of money. So if you're going to book hotel, please book through our housing. You can um, access that through the website. Um, and it's on peak, just know that you're dealing with on peak, who is our official housing provider. Um, the show is published to end at 530, but we actually keep the show floor open for an extra hour. We call this the power hour. This is a good time to schedule appointments you may need that you can't get, you know, beginning of the day. So we encourage that. Um, and then badge registration is open. So we are still one of the few shows who mail badges. Um, that cutoff date though is January 20th. If you apply for badges or register for badges after this date, you will need to pick them up on site. Um, the Inspired Home is our consumer platform. It consists of a website and a um, printed journal that is being distributed at Whole Foods and um, Barnes and Noble right now. So this is a relatively new initiative. I think we're in our fourth year, um, but this is our how we reach consumers, and this is free to you as an exhibiting member um, of the Houseware Show. And there's a whole editorial cal um, calendar where you would submit your products, and then that goes out to our social media influencers who test it, and then they write about it, and we publish um, a blog of sorts. Um, it's kind of a mix between a blog and a Pinterest site where and consumers can learn about your product and they can also shop the story. So you tell us where you want us to send them, whether it be a independent retailer or your own website or Amazon or whatnot. So if you haven't, um, if you're not familiar with this, or you haven't taken any um, advantage of this, we would encourage you to do this. We've got a nice following going. Um, and we know that some of our exhibitors are really seeing results from this. Um, there's a manager for this. You can just contact her. Her name is Tracy, and she can um, walk you through whatever you need to know on that. Then we're also in our third year in our Excellence in Booth Design Awards. Um, you can sign up for that on the website, and we um, judge. We have a panel of expert judges um, that judge the booths and help us kind of get down to finalists and honorees. And, you're, it's part of the GIA, so you're awarded um, a GIA award, and you get mentioned um, in all of our press and media about that. If you are looking for uh, manufacturer representatives, IHA can be a great resource for you. Um, you can find this page on our website. Uh, you'll see the specific links um, listed below. Um, once you get in there, you can look by geographic area, by name, by channel of trade. 
uh, by product category, so it allows you some flexibility um, if you have interest there. Okay, so any final questions, Jenny, that are out there by chance? Okay. Um, we certainly shared a lot of information today, but all that means is that there's a ton of opportunity to take advantage of. The majority of it, um, like we've noted, is free. So we'd certainly encourage you to do a number of things. Take advantage of what is appropriate for you um, that is free. Um, secondly, if you do have any um, questions, the IHA staff here is available for you um, at any time. All our emails, you'll see our three emails up here and phone numbers, but um, the entire IHA staff is located um, contact information on our website. Again, we've shared a lot of information from, um, with you today. Uh, one thing I would say, though, um, in my short time here, one of the best things that you may want to take advantage of quickly um, is the press event in New York. If you have interest there, um, I would get on that right away. It's one of the best values we have. Um, you'd be amazed at how much um, influence you get and exposure you get for that. Um, last couple of things real quickly. Like I said at the beginning here, this webinar will be available on our website within the next 24 hours. You'll also get an email from Michelle Lehman on our staff with that link as well. We have one more webinar um, on the same topic, which will be the 23rd, if you have interest there. Again, contact us if you have any questions. Thank you very much for participating. And on behalf of everyone here at IHA, uh, thank you for participating in the show and participating in this webinar. Have a great show.